So I said in yesterday's stream I didn't want to make a video about this just yet because I wanted to wait for more things to come out before we actually went there and explored this topic. So now that there is a little bit more meat to the bone here, I think it is somewhat okay to make a video more as a bookmark, I guess. You know, this is just a bookmark. Talking about the Travis Hamannick situation so far and where exactly it puts the Vancouver Canucks. Now, Travis Hamannick, as you know, he is a Vancouver Canucks signed defenseman. He's making $3 million a season until 2023. And that contract is certainly not what Canucks fans were expecting when it was signed. He was okay with Vancouver last season, 10 points, 38 games played. He's mostly known as a shutdown, defensively capable guy who played with Quinn Hughes and allowed Hughes to do his thing. Now, I know it's kind of odd because Quinn Hughes last year was a lot worse, defensively speaking at least, compared to Quinn Hughes when he was playing with Chris Tanev, but Hamannick is still here, he was re-signed, and alongside of Tucker Pullman and Tyler Myers, he was supposed to make up this right-side decor that the Canucks projected towards having heading into 2021-2022. However, a week ago we had ourselves a tweet here from Irfan Gafar that kind of got a lot of people freaking out about this right side defense. Travis Hamannick is indeed on the Vancouver Canucks training camp roster, however, it is my understanding that he's not currently in Vancouver. As well, it's not injury related either why he is not there. This sparked up a whole bunch of conversation as to what could it be? Why is he not here? Why is he not in Vancouver? Is he going to be a part of the team? How exactly is this going to work with the Vancouver Canucks plans? Eventually, give it a few days, and Satir Shah says on the radio that Travis Hamannick is not really a done deal to be vaccinated. The Canucks are still trying to convince him, and Shaw says he doesn't think the Canucks would want him on the roster if he doesn't end up vaccinating. This, of course, sparked an even bigger discussion with the vaccines and all that. The Vancouver Canucks are a Canadian team, and because Canadian teams are a lot more, let's just say, strict about the rules than American teams are, it begs the question as to whether or not Travis Hamannick, if this is true, because this is just a rumor that was spread over here by Shaw on the radio, whether or not Hamannick would actually have himself a future in Vancouver on the squad, whether or not he would get the vaccine if he had not done so already. Give it a few days, and eventually it is Rick Dollywall who talks about this on Donnie and Dolly yesterday. It's a long quote, it's a two-minute video, and in fact, Don Taylor asks Rick Dollywall if Dollywall has heard about Hamannick being anti-vax. Dollywall says he has not heard anything of that respect. Also, that Hamannick's mom is a nurse, and there are a few other things at play. But the biggest reason that Dollywall highlights as to why this entire holdup is happening with Hamannick, he's not in Vancouver, he's not practicing with the team, is because he's thinking about retirement, sitting out the season, returning, everything is on the table. Because he's a family man, and because there is indeed a certain opt-out date for this season that is going to be Friday, October 1st. So if there's an announcement between now and then as to whether or not Hamannick is going to join the team, opt out of the season, get traded or something or whatever, we will see what happens then. But Travis Hamannick, if you take a look at the more recent updates that we have had today, he indeed is not in Vancouver still. He remains in Manitoba. And writer Rob Simpson here on Vancouver Hockey Now says that a source says the Canucks are considering trading him. And at this point, you have to start considering the options of whether or not that would be a profitable move for your organization from an asset management point of view. Before we go over and give my thoughts on the entire thing, we have one more quote to go over. This is what Jim Benning said about Travis Hamannick and the entire media sphere asking about it. I don't know why people think when we make a statement about a personal issue, people think they can stick their noses in it. Just leave the guy alone and let him figure out what he needs to figure out, Benning said. He's dealing with a personal issue and I think everybody should just leave it alone. Just leave the guy alone and let him figure out what he needs to figure out. I'm in constant communication with his agent, and he's got a decision to make with how he is feeling about everything. When he lets me know, we'll work out from there. As for now, there's nothing to figure out. Let's give it time and see where he's at Thursday or Friday, and then go from there. And so, with Travis Hamannick's status with the Vancouver Canucks up in the air like this, we don't know whether or not he's actually going to return to the team, if he's going to opt out of the season, if they're going to go out there and trade this guy, it kind of begs a little bit of a question as to what exactly is going to happen next. Because let's assume 
Travis Hamanick does decide to sit out the year. He's not going to play, and the Vancouver Canucks have to get extended ice time from Luke Shen. They maybe have to make a trade for somebody, because if you have a right-side decor of Myers, Shen, and Poolman with, I don't know, Jet Wu or whatever as your next guy up, who knows if a trade for a right-side defender is in store. But I also wanted to take a look at the cap, because $3 million for Travis Hamanick for the next two seasons is not insignificant, especially in the Vancouver Canucks' current climate, of what they need to do right now. If Travis Hamanick goes on the LTIR because he opts out for the year, I don't know if that's actually how it works, but I would assume maybe the money would not be counted towards the cap anymore, you have to go out there and sign P.D. and Hughes long-term, man. You give Elias Pettersson... $9 million by eight years. You give Hughes eight by eight. You get this done because all of a sudden you have an extra $3 million you're able to spend that was already piled upon with that $16 million mark that we had earlier with all the other guys going on the LTIR too. This Canucks team would be getting a pretty big monetary break should the $3 million Travis Hamannick dollars not actually be put into place. And I don't want to go out there and make it seem like I'm talking about this guy as if he's just relief for PD and Hughes. But if it gets to that point where he's no longer on the team and he decides to not play, I honestly would just say, yeah, just sign the guys long term, man. Lock this up. Make sure we don't converse for another second about PD and Hughes contract negotiations until 2029 rolls around. Give us that time frame for us to be at peace with the Vancouver Canucks contract negotiations right here. Because it would work out if you went out there and took away Travis Hamannick's 3 million AAV. Now, obviously, if you're going to go out there and make a trade and acquire another right-handed defenseman to play because you don't trust Luke Shen to play 82 games in an NHL season, then maybe you have yourself some other problems to work out with with the cap, and that is certainly understandable. However, this is the situation we have at hand right now, and... As of recording this video, 2.44 p.m. Tuesday, September 28th, 2021 here in Vancouver, we have not had an update beyond this. Benning is just saying, leave the guy alone, we'll figure things out Thursday, Friday, when there's an update from the party. However, it appears that based off of other Vancouver Canucks beat reporters and media personalities, that we might just not know what's going on with Hamannick and his status for the year right now. If he is, though, opting out for family reasons because he wants to spend more time with his children or whatever, that is fine. Absolutely okay. Rick Dollywell had a little segment on the Donnie and Dolly show where he said, yeah, like, I respect the guy for that. Putting his family first before everything. His pro career, his traveling and all that stuff. Family comes first, and that is good. Good to see him prioritizing the ones that he loves. However, it is just kind of strange because... It was only a few weeks ago that he signed that $3 million AAV contract, and you can see the comments over here in the same province article that we took the Benning comments from. I would love it, Hamannick said a few weeks ago. When we decided on Vancouver, we looked at it as a long-term situation of where we wanted to be for my career and family. I loved every second of it, and it has been a good fit. So, it is kind of strange just seeing the entire picture that we have presented to us right now, where a few weeks ago he's like, yeah, I'm ready, I want to go, I'm good with playing in Vancouver, happy to be here, I want to be here long term, which is why he signed that contract till 2023, and now he's still in Manitoba, not heading over to camp, debating all options as to whether or not it would be right for him personally to play the season, and now we're in a position where we don't know what our right side is going to look like. Maybe this entire thing is why we haven't had the PD and Hughes contracts yet, because Benning is waiting on that final number. Okay, if Hamannick decides to opt out, there's that extra money right there. There is a bigger opportunity to get PD and Hughes to sign eight-year deals if you have an extra $3 million a cap to spend. Maybe that's the entire reason we've been waiting. So who knows? We'll give ourselves another week to figure everything out and... Just wait and see, you know, because this entire thing is important just based off of the monetary side of things as well as the right defense depth side of things. I personally love Luke Shen, and I really do think that he would be great playing with Quinn Hughes again, so I'm kind of biased, you know? I really do like Shen, and I've been noting that in every stream that we have spoken about with the Lightning and all that in the previous few my goodness, years, because he was Quinn Hughes' first ever D partner, and he is a solid NHL veteran, but... I could totally understand if you're going out there and saying that you don't want Luke Shen playing 82 games in an NHL season. So talk to me in the comments. What do you think about Hamannick? The entire situation over here. Hope you enjoyed this special Ash Rolls and I9. And bye. <laughs>